We're gonna look at a nice algebra problem that involves the roots of a cubic polynomial. So let's see what it says. We wanna find a cubic polynomial whose roots are the reciprocals of the roots of x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where c is not equal to zero. Well, so obviously we need c to not be equal to zero because if c were equal to zero, then zero would be a root of this equation. But then we can't really take the reciprocal of zero to form a new cubic polynomial. Okay, so before we jump into this, let's do a warm up. And for the warm up, we're gonna look at the quadratic case. So in other words, we wanna look at the polynomial x squared plus ax plus b, and here we'll have b is not equal to zero. So the constant term is not equal to zero. Well, let's think about factoring this into its roots. So we'll factor it as x minus r1 and x minus r2. So in other words, r1 and r2 are the roots of this quadratic polynomial. But now we can multiply out this x minus r1 and x minus r2, and then equate coefficients on both sides of the equation, and then get these coefficients a and b in terms of r1 and r2. So let's maybe do that. Here we've got x squared plus ax plus b equals, now multiplying this out will give us x squared minus r1 plus r2 times x plus r1 times r2. Okay, good. And now we can see that on the right-hand side of the equation, or I should say the left-hand side of the equation, the coefficient of x is a, but then on the right-hand side of the equation, the coefficient of x is minus r1 plus r2. And then the constant term on the left-hand side of the equation is b, and the constant term on the right-hand side of the equation is r1 times r2. So let's see what that tells us. We'll have pretty quickly that r1 plus r2 is equal to minus a, and then r1 times r2 is equal to b. Now from here what we wanna do is construct a new polynomial. I'm gonna write it as x squared plus capital AX plus capital B, which factors as the polynomial whose roots are the reciprocal of our original polynomial. So that'll be x minus one over R1, x minus one over R2. And then we can do the same trick that we did above, multiply out this right-hand side, that's gonna give us x squared minus one over r1 plus one over r2 times x plus one over r1 times r2. And then equate coefficients just like we did in this previous step. So capital A will be equal to this, and then capital B will be equal to this right here. Okay, great. So let's see what that gives us. We'll have capital A is equal to negative one over R1 plus one over R2. But then maybe like finding a common denominator here, we can see that this is minus R1 plus R2 over R1 times R2. But notice that this minus sign can be absorbed into the R1 plus R2, and that'll give us A here. So here we'll have A over B. So just to reiterate that denominator, r1 times r2 is b, and then the numerator, r1 plus r2 is negative a, but that cancels with that minus sign. Okay, great, so we've got this coefficient, and then this second coefficient, one over r1 times r2 is even easier because we see that it lives right in this thing right here. So just to reiterate, we have b is equal to one over little b. So that means the polynomial in question in this quadratic case is x squared plus a over bx plus one over b. Okay, so we've solved the warm up. Now let's maybe go ahead and erase this and we'll look at the main problem. Okay, we just did a warm up to our main problem involving a quadratic polynomial. Now we'll look at the cubic version, which is our main goal. So we've got x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c. We wanna factor that in terms of its roots. 
So we can factor that as x minus r1, x minus r2, and x minus r3, where those are the roots of our original polynomial. And I guess I should be saying here that we're assuming this factorization is happening over the complex numbers just to be sure that everything is totally factorable. It's well known that polynomials factor into linear factors over the complex numbers. Now we'll multiply out this right-hand side. That'll leave us with x cubed minus r1 plus r2 plus r3 times x squared plus r1 r2 r1 r3 r2 r3 times x and then finally minus r1 r2 r3 that's the constant term now we can play the same game that we did for our quadratic polynomial and that is equate coefficients on both sides of the equation so we'll have this coefficient a will be equal to negative r1 plus r2 plus r3 and then this coefficient b will be equal to this thing that is quadratic in the roots. So it's r1 times r2 plus r1 times r3, and then the last term. And then finally, this coefficient c will be equal to negative r1 times r2 times r3. Now let's move on to look at our polynomial with reciprocal roots. So again, I'll use capital letters. So we'll have x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus capital C, and then we're assuming that the roots of this polynomial are reciprocals of the roots of our original polynomial. So that means it's x minus one over r1, x minus one over r2, and then x minus one over r3, like that. Now we can multiply out this right-hand side just like we did above. That's gonna leave us with x cubed minus one over r1 plus one over r2 plus one over r3 times x squared plus 1 over r1 r2, 1 over r1 r3, plus 1 over r2 r3 x, and then minus 1 over r1 r2 r3. And now we'll play the same game that we did above by equating coefficients. So we'll have a will be equal to this minus the sum of the reciprocal of the roots. We'll have this capital B will be equal to this object, which is just this sum of the quadratic reciprocal of the roots or something like that. And then finally, this constant term will be equal to the product of the roots like that. So now we'll start putting these coefficients together so they look similar to what we started with. So we'll start by combining the sum of reciprocals. So we first off have to find some sort of common denominator, which will clearly be just the product here. So we'll have R1 times R2 times R3. And in the numerator, we'll have this quadratic combination of the roots. So R1 times R2, R1 times R3, plus R2 times R3, like that. Now we're gonna play the same game for these others. So here we'll have the same denominator, so that product of the roots, r1, r2, r3, but now we'll just have the sum of the roots in the numerator after, of course, like combining those together. So we'll have r1 plus r2 plus r3. And then there's nothing really to do with this last one right here. Okay, so let's see where we can go from here. Well, we can see that this is attached to a minus sign. So let's maybe bring that minus sign in here. And then this is also attached to a minus sign. So let's maybe also bring that minus sign into the denominator like that. And now we can actually look at these and recognize them as some of our original coefficients. So I'll bring this x cubed down and then we'll have plus, we'll notice that this r1, r2 plus r1, r3 plus r2, r3 is exactly this red underlined thing right here, which was B. So that means, like I said, this guy right here is B. And then this product is exactly C. So here we have, this is equal to C. And then we can make some similar observations everywhere else. So let's notice that this guy right here is equal to negative A, and then the denominator here is equal to negative C. So obviously the minus signs there are gonna cancel. And then here we've got something that is obviously one over C. So now putting this all together, we see that we have X cubed plus B over C times X squared plus A over C times 
x plus one over c. So this would be the polynomial whose roots are the reciprocals of our original polynomial. Notice there's some nice structure here. So we're dividing by this c term everywhere, and then there's been some switching from the coefficient of x squared to the coefficient of x. So this coefficient of x squared was originally a, but that switched to the coefficient of x. This coefficient of x was originally b, that switched to the coefficient of x squared. So I think seeing this structure, we can maybe pretty easily write down a conjecture of what's going on in the general case. So let's maybe do that. So what we saw in the cubic case, I think pretty quickly leads us to the following conjecture. So let's say we have a naught is not equal to zero, then these two degree n polynomials have reciprocal roots. So let's see how they're constructed. Well, we have this one, which is our starting polynomial, x to the n plus a sub n minus one, x to the n minus one, all the way down to a sub zero. And then this one is constructed from our starting polynomial. So we've got x to the n plus one over a naught, and then that's been factored out of the next lot of terms. Here we've got a1 x to the n minus one, a2 x to the n minus two, all the way down to a n minus one x. So what's happened is that these coefficients here have swapped places. It's like we've folded the polynomial in half. That's how I like to think of it visually. And then next our constant term is one over a naught. So like I said, this is just a conjecture. I think, you know, humanity has proven it in the past for sure because this isn't really that groundbreaking of a discovery or anything. But maybe if you guys wanna work out the details, which I think probably aren't too bad, maybe you could do that for homework and uh, tell me if I'm right in the comments. And that's a good place to start.